Now this video is going to show the steps that I used to install a Michelin 5 front tire, replacing the original Dunlop tire, how to take it off the motorcycle, removing the brake calipers, among other things, some of the tools you need to do this. I try not to leave out any steps. You do need a, a few special tools. And in the case of this, I had to go buy one at Harbor Freight. So, well, I wanted to show some of the other things, the Motion Pro bead breaker, how I used it. Some of the tricks will make it easier for you. How I installed the tire, I used the spoon method on this one. Yeah, again, using the Motion Pro rim protectors. How I put the new tire on, how I balanced it, how I got it put back on the motorcycle pretty uh, efficiently, and how to test for leaks before you actually go ride the motorcycle. Installing the calipers, installing the wire, and being very careful with that front wire that hooks to the ABS. So it's a lot of little details. It's a relatively simple job I think anybody should be able to do for a backyard mechanic. So without further ado, let's go get started. Uh, today's video is going to be about changing the front tire on the MT-09. We have a Michelin 5 to install. We have the Dunlop. It's got, I think, about 6,700 miles on it. It's worn to the bars on one side, but not on the other side. Don't ask me why. I don't know. But I am fascinated by tires, and I, been since I bought the Durometer, I've been comparing tires every time I ride, taking readings on various tires, and I, the one thing that's come out of it, out of all that data, is that the Michelin 5s are by far the softest of the tires when they're hot, when they're cold, and when they're in a parking lot, and when they're in a garage. So I don't know how the front one's going to affect the handling of the bike, but it's with the tire worn like this, the front, the handling's just starting to get wonky now. I think a lot of people would have put another thousand or so, maybe even more miles on it, but once the handling gets a little wonky, time for tires. Now, we, we have a whole video on how to use a durometer, and this one is a, a 55. This is a Dunlop. This is the tire that it comes with. It's a 55, 55, 50, and probably averages out to 57 when you're done. So, we know that this tire now, you can I can tell it's time to replace it. If I put my hand on it, it isn't round and curved. It's kind of like, I call it squared off. And it's squared off more on, on that side than this side. I usually turn a little bit better to that side, and I don't know how much that affects it. Some people say it's the curvature of the road. I don't know. Another thing we're going to do today is get rid of this, the valve stem going straight up and down and get a curvy girl on it. All the bikes, every time that I got, I've had to buy a new rim or tire or anything, I always want to have the 90 degree valve stems because I check the air every time I ride the bike. So the first thing I want to check, the mileage I have, 6,700. And probably, realistically, I could have gone to 7,000, but it's a rainy day and this is a good day to change the tire. And for me, once that handling gets a little bit unpredictable, I really don't like to push it. So first thing I'll do is log in that mileage like I do with all the tires. I try to keep a, a log of the mileage every time I change a tire. Now I do like to log in all the information on the tires and then this way I can compare how long as an example a one type of tire like a Michelin 2 lasts relative to the Michelin 5. The, the Michelin 5's I've been real happy with the rear one so far but I don't know how long it's going to last relative to the Michelin 2's. Now one thing the, the manual for this bike cautions you is not to put on different size tires it screws up the traction control and the ABS brakes and whatever. So we're going to make sure, and I have already made sure, that the tire is the exact size. It does not have to be the same brand, but it does have to be the same size to keep all the electronics working properly. So as always, the first thing before I do any work on this, I have to move the bikes around so I can get the bike I'm going to work on under the electronic come along. And boy, that electric come along that I bought from, from Harbor Freight, that has been the best $75 investment I've ever made. Makes jobs like this very easy. Now I always like to have the back in a stand. And as a precautionary thing, I leave the kickstand down. I have two of these come-alongs. I have the manual one in the back of the shop, which I can use just in case I'm using 
working on two bikes at the same time. But this one that I, again I got from Harbor Freight that has served me so well. And it's important always when you put the strap, however you strap each bike's a little different. Don't pinch any of the wires. Don't pinch any of the cables or anything. And in this case, the MT-09 is pretty straightforward and easy to get the strap on. So I just need to get the bike off the ground enough that I can get the front wheel off. Now it's really just me. And any time I have the bike up on the, up on the stands or up on a come along where I can get along and clean the wheel easily, I always like to keep it clean. If you let it get real dirty, it's really a, a chop to clean it. When you clean it regularly, what happens is you, it's pretty easy to keep it clean. But boy, when you let it go, it's like anything else. Now, it's always handy to me to have these little Harbor Freight flashlights. And what I'm always careful of now is when I pull the caliper off, and the, the bolts come off with the little reflector. I don't want to scratch the rim. I want to be real careful. And if you're in doubt, put some blue tape on there. Now, some rims, like the ones on the R1, are really close. You really can get, have a problem. But this one looks like there's plenty of clearance. And there we go. Now, I've got to get zip ties and just get this up out of the way. And then I'll go work on the other side. So having a caliper zip tied up out of the way, that just makes it a little more convenient. Now we go to the other side. And of course, same thing on the other side, to remove the caliper and zip tie it up. Now before I remove the wire, I need to take this, the uh, caliper, I mean, I need to loosen this, pull that sensor out, that's the sensor for the ABS, really, really carefully. They're joined up here, so I'm just going to pull this off to the side and again try to get it up with zip ties. But being very delicate with this, that wire is several hundred dollars. If you damage that wire and sensor, Luciano already found out how expensive it is. Now again, this is a, an expensive part if you damage it. And you want to get this up out of the way, so there's no way you pinch this or squeeze it or whatever. That picks up the reading off of the ring. And with all those parts removed and zip tied up, we're ready to pull the wheel, loosen the axle and pull the wheel. And next thing is to loosen the pinch bolt. Now, if you happen to have one of these, this is a, uh, one of the things that comes with, with other bikes that I have, but it's in my, my tool array. And this end of it happens to fit in here if you just don't have the exact nut you need, that fits right in there. So after trying to get it out with that little plug wrench, well, it didn't have enough leverage on it, and I thought, hmm, I better go and go buy the right tool down at Harbor Freight. And I didn't want to bust the tool up by putting a, a big bar on it or something. That bolt obviously is in there pretty solid. It's supposed to be 47 foot-pounds they put it in with, and it's probably Loctite, who the hell knows. But anyway, it'll be, give me an excuse to run over to Harbor Freight and get a 14, it's a 14 millimeter that I need. So lucky for me, I live real close to a, har, a, a Harbor Freight, and 90% of the stuff I bought in Harbor Freight is totally serviceable for a backyard mechanic, and the stuff that isn't, well, then you just go pay the price. So how cool is this? We have a cycle gear, a BMW dealer, and what's the other thing, a salon, and a Harbor Freight. Well, we need the Harbor Freight a lot more than anything else. Open on Sunday, too, who knew? Good old Harbor Freight saves the day. And I just love shopping here. That's the bottom line. So what I got, I decided to upgrade to the premium ones. These are, and it even has a 19 millimeter. I need a 14, but they're so handy. Every time you need one of these tools, worth its weight in gold. I love it. I love having tools. So back on this rainy day, back to getting this tire changed. Now, by the time we got back from Harbor Freight, ah, it, at least it stopped raining anyway. So, and we got the right tool to do the job the right way. Thank you, Harbor Freight. Decided, I, and I'm glad I did, I got the, uh, this, this by the way, the premium one here. Because we use these every time we change tires, front axles. And I know a lot of these big ones you need when you work on Ducatis and stuff too. So this is a good investment. But I was thinking, this is pretty funny. Most of these just snap out. This one has four screws holding it in, 
that's pretty cool. So this will be good. I'll, I'll put the screws back because I want to maintain this. And a lot of times I loan tools to people. And if they're in a case, I'll put my name on it or something. I might even get them back. So I thought I'd share a quick, a quick story about what... And it's, oops, sorry. This is one of the tricks I learned when I was Joe Cassie's partner in a machine shop. In a machine shop, you're dealing with a lot of these people that never worked in a machine shop. Big socket screws that are always way too tight. And you always have to put a lot of leverage on them. What happens at some point in time, they get sloppy. You get a sloppy fit. Well, what Joe used to do, he'd take a piece of a, an ordinary tin can, cut it like a strip, the thickness of this, and put the wrench in and put maybe two or three pieces in and then just hammer the, hammer the socket in to get the bolt out. And boy, did that ever work great. Because what happens if it starts getting sloppy and you force it, you round it all off. If you put that piece of can in there, and boy, that is a tip. When you can't get a bolt out, that's a tip worth its weight in gold. So the other wrench didn't work, and I'm hoping that, and of course it's important to have that socket all the way in. I'm hoping this is going to do the job, which it does perfectly. Thank you, Harbor Freight. It always seems like the factory, they call for 47 foot pounds. But any time I've ever taken out a new bike and taken it apart, it seems like it's a lot tighter than 47 to me. Maybe it's just me and I'm getting weak. <laughs> a very good chance of that. So with this, the axle pulls right out. The wheel's going to drop to the floor. The spacers are going to drop out. They're identical. You can put the same one on each side. And carefully pull out the wheel. Don't scratch it. And we're ready to go downstairs and change a tire. Now, a small tip if you work on, don't work on a bike all the time, some bikes have a different spacer for each side. It's always a good idea, in this case, to uh, put the spacer the, and lay, just lay them down the way they, they come out of the bike. I've done that with the bolts on the calipers, even though it doesn't matter. Now, th this is, the bike has a snap ring, the ring that, that tells the the electronics, what's going on here, prevents it from doing uh, ABS things and attraction control and everything. But, but one of the things, and I do remember this, I remember Jose told me a story, one of his friends had a BMW, and at the dealer, they put the wheel in backwards. And he was riding a bike and nothing worked, the ABS didn't work, the traction control or whatever, and they had the front wheel on. So, always a good idea, we know that the, the wiring's on this side, so obviously we put the wheel back. That'll be kind of self-explanatory, but you would think at a dealer that would never happen. Not true. Now, if this were a hot day, I'd take the tire I'm going to mount and put it out in the driveway and put it under a black rug, but it's raining and it's just as the same temperature in the cellar here. So the first thing I would always do is just take a, a clean microfiber and get some of the dust and dirt off of this. And just so it's a little bit nicer to work on even though this is pretty clean i've been keeping this bike pretty clean but still i like to have it as clean as possible when we're all done of course one of the things we'll do is clean the brake rotors with some brake port cleaner and but getting in here while we have it apart it's very convenient to get in here and clean everything up now this is the tire that came with the bike it's a dunlop 6700 miles but you can see that at the edge you can see how this tire is tearing itself up on hard cornering. This is, if you were on a track, this would be even worse. And it would wear out a lot quicker, of course. But this is telling me, it, it's giving me an indication of just how soft that tire is. So that, and it lasted 7,000 miles, so I'm not thinking that that's a terrible choice. But since I already have the Michelin 5 on the back, and this is, this is a Sport Max, so, I, <laughs> Dunlop, of course, and... I'm just thinking, I want to see if the, if the Michelin 5 is, of course it's doing this in the back already, but it's what I'm looking for is the overall wear. Now just because a tire is soft doesn't mean it'll wear out, because what will happen is some tires are very thin, the carcass is very thin. Other tires, touring tires, tend to be a little flatter. So here we're already through the bars, on the side we're through the bars, now this is unusual. We're through this, we're, in other words, we're worn out where we're riding on the edge of the tire, but we're not even close to being worn out in the middle of the tire. I mean, we've got, you've got four or 5,000 more miles on this part of the tire, but on this, we just wore out the edge. So, and that's, that tells you something. I'm not sure what, but 
anyway, I, so my feeling is, and I'm not a Dunlop lover, that's for sure, but, but this might not be a bad tire if you weren't cornering so hard, if you're doing a lot of touring, <laughs> whatever. I don't know. I don't know, but wearing out the edges of the tires, yeah, you can see we're already through the bars, and then having plenty of rubber in the middle, that's an unusual scenario for a street bike. So the first thing, obviously, we want to take the tire valve out. We're going to get rid of the whole valve and put in a curvy girl. And since we do check the tires, the, the air on a regular basis, I'm very fussy about. Now, what it is, where I ride, it's relatively bumpy. So I like the tires probably a little softer than most people just to get that little extra grip. And I'm not so concerned, I'm not overly concerned with the wear, because no matter what, I wear the tires out relatively quickly. So, and I don't mind replacing them. I do it myself, and Vlad gets me the tires at a pretty reasonable price, and thank you, Vlad. So, letting the air out of this, and then we'll uh, get our Motion Pro, Pro bead breaker and see if that's going to work on these rims. It worked. By the way, we already have the video out. Here we go. The video is already out on the uh, channel. You can search for it. My name Windy Ertnowski in quotation marks and then Michelin 5 tire and it'll come right up. Okay, so next thing we'll let the air come out, get the bead breaker. And this is the Motion Pro, Pro bead breaker. Uh, it's worked pretty well for me on sport bike tires. This has worked pretty well. These are the curvy girls and I, I always try to get the 90 degree valve stems on as soon as possible. This is the first time I've changed the front tire. So just so it makes it convenient and easy because you can see what happens here. My hands don't really fit down in there the way they should. So, and when it's easy to check the air pressure, you tend to do it. And when it's hard and difficult, you say, I'll do that tomorrow. That's true. Now I have the Harbor Freight Bead Breaker 2. I have them both. This one seems pretty convenient. And it's just a matter of time. The thing with this is you got to go around various spots of the tire, move the tire, do this over and over again, but it eventually breaks the bead and you, it's a nice tool, it's very easy to use. Now if the tire seems a little little stickier than normal, what I always do, just spray a little Windex around a bead because as you push this down it tends to let some of that the, the wetness, I guess, lubrication get down in there and then it just makes it a little bit easier. But basically you have to go around the tire, it does take a few minutes and well the other one the problem i had with the other one that the reason i bought these the other one i put tape and towels and everything on it and it always wound up i had a tendency it would scratch the rim and it really bothers me to scratch the rims this is time consuming you gotta go around the whole tire but there's no part of it that's touching the rim and of course at some point you're down and you, the rest of it you can just push by hand once you get that broken and the Windex does seem to help letting that last little bit go. Then we'll flip it over, do the other side. Pretty much exactly the same. Just takes a few minutes and we'll be ready to pull the tire. And here in fast forward you can see you basically just have to go around and around and around so many times. Every tire, some of these rims are a little bit different, but this tool has worked pretty good on all the jobs I put it to. So with that and fast forward, you just get some idea of how these sides break off. A little, a little time consuming, but the biggest thing for me is it does not, you don't run that tendency to scratch the rim. Now I know some people find this part difficult. On some bikes that I have custom painted rims, where the paint might still be soft, I cut the old tire off with a saw, with a grinding saw. But <laughs> this one is it, very easy to take off. And what helps is just run your hand on the inside of, before you try to pop it off and get some soap on the rim. In the meantime, we'll just wipe that rim all down, get it nice and clean while we got it apart. And we really only needed one of the, uh, the Motion Pro things and no scratch at all. And that's the main thing. So the next step on this is to get on the Curvy Girl. Again, now, if you if you do order Curvy Girl, it's K-U-R-V-E-Y, and it's not a porno site. If you put in the wrong thing, it, obviously if you're into porno, but what we're into is getting some 90-degree valve stems. And Julie down at 
And a curvy girl is very nice to deal with. You'll enjoy ordering from her. They make these in two sizes. Make sure you know what size. You can usually find out the size from, they have a chart, or you can call up Julie, and she'll probably tell you she doesn't really know, but she'll connect you with somebody who should know, or obviously it's their business. But I have ordered them multiple times and gotten I thought I needed the eights and I got elevens and elevens and eight yeah, that, but and it was always my fault now since we're not going to reuse these I'm just going to cut this off carefully and what that allows you to do just to avoid of course like everything we do it's to avoid making a scratch on the rim now at some point in time I anticipate custom painting these rims but it's still even while they're in powder coat I don't want to have any scratches on them. And the box just pulls right out. Okay, now there's a couple of do's and don'ts putting in these valve stems that I found, of course, the hard way. <laughs> the, they are wonderful, and they work. I've never had one go bad or leak or anything. But they are delicate. So you've got to, in your own mind, you've got to know how tight you want to make this. Now, the first thing I would do, I want to decide which side. I want this out the side opposite the kickstand. Bike is leaning this way, I want to be able to check the air that way. And so I want to make sure I've got the correct fit. Now there's a little rubber gasket in here. Now that rubber gasket, it's around the edge. You really don't want to force that in. Now, I run my finger in there to see if there's a razor edge. In this case, there isn't. But if there is, I want to just touch that. Now in the meantime, what I'll do is I'll take one drop of, in fact, let me get some right now, the, the equivalent of Dawn or Windex, just get one tiny little drop on there, and that'll just let it seat without tearing up the rubber. We want it going out that way. Now they give you Loctite when you buy these. You get this little tube of Loctite and they suggest you use it, but, but don't ever, once you put this on, you're pretty much married to it. When you go to take it off, more than likely it'll be difficult or impossible to get off. Once you seat that, I'm holding the valve stem with my hands, and I want to do this by hand. I don't want to put a big wrench on it and tighten it down. I want it to be hand tight, take the wrench off, and see if I can move it. And if I can't move it, it's good to go. If I can move it, mm, I'll just tighten this up just a little bit. In fact, I'll make it a little bit tighter there. But, but one thing to avoid is to put that big wrench on and go and pop the valve stem. So here's a little tip what I have to do with this wrench that I put it on. I have to grind some of that away. Or you have to have a very thin wall socket to get in there and do that properly. Okay, so what we have to do now is orient the tire. Make sure we have the direction correct when we put it on. And it's always written somewhere on the tire. And thank you Michelin. The last couple of Michelins I put on, they balanced up pretty good. Now, there's no dot on this tire. Some I have had, and some there's no dot. Now, the reason Michelin, when I tried to get that information from people I know that know this kind of stuff, like Rich Peabody, what I found out is that Michelin rejects the tires that need a red dot. Well, we're going to find out. Now, there should be a variation in how much the, the valve stem we took off, put on. We don't know if that's true or not, if, if that's going to be in our favor or not in our favor. But this tire does not have a red dot. So we're just going to mount it randomly, make sure it's in the right direction and see if it's our lucky day. Now I'm using a Nomar uh, tire mounting lube, but to be honest, and thank you Bob Navola who donated that to our course, the, the Dawn seems to work just as well. You really only have to put this on the side of the rim you're going on, the other side doesn't matter. But it is important to make sure you have the tire rotation correct. And I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how this is going to balance up. Now, I've got to do both sides, of course. Now, on our channel, I've shown, we probably have over 100 videos of how to change tires. And I've tried to show different methods, and this is just the ordinary traditional method. What I'm trying to do is show all the methods that I know, the duct tape method, the zip tie method. The, but the biggest single thing about mounting a tire, to make it easier and make it quicker, just get the tire warm. If you're doing it in the winter and you can use a quartz heater, a hair dryer, or anything, warming up the tire is the biggest single thing in your favor. And when we've done the duct tape method, 
there's so many videos out there, it's just pointless. I try to show a different way each time. And the idea is by showing the different methods, you can use a lot of different methods to avoid scratching the rims. And when I have probably 100 hours into the GS project, the rims and the R1 project, those projects, those rims, I don't want a tiny scratch in them. No, we've, we've come away unscathed. We've got to seat the, seat the bead, get some air in it, and see if it balances. Now before I seat this, one final thing I want to just double check. <laughs> double check the arrow that I have the rotation correct, because if you don't, you got to break the whole bead again. And of course the biggest thing is waiting for the pop. Once you hear the pop, well, it's, it's a good sound. And we'll have to get this balanced. Now I've always found Michelin's to be the softest and easiest to mount. Most of my friends agree with that. The Dunlops are the hardest. Okay, now I'm going to put 50 pounds of air in here. And then look at it. I have some errands to do. Before I mount it back on the bike, I want to let it sit and make sure I don't have a leak at the bead or at the valve. Okay, we've got 50 in there now. So the next thing is using some Windex. I want to see if the bead is seated. If it hasn't seated, very simple thing. We let the air out of the tire, break the bead, clean up whatever residue or whatever is in there that's keeping it. The valve, valve is seated, no bubbles. I don't see any bubbles around the edge. We'll obviously check both ends. You also can use your finger. There's, there's usually a little line on the tire itself. You could feel if it went like that, you'd know it was hanging up on something, either some dirt or whatever. And that's just another reason to have everything immaculately clean when you do a tire change including the wheel and of course and keeping in there nice and clean too i'm so fussy i like to keep the whole bike clean it's just more fun working on it okay i had a cup of coffee it passed the bleed down test with flying colors and i just want to get this off it won't really matter this is not going to change the balance that much but getting all these decals i don't know why they put so many decals on these things it is annoying getting them off too Okay, now, uh, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Boy, it's really close. This is what I hate about this. When they're really close like this, you don't know whether to screw with them or not. Let's see where the weight is, since they put a weight on it. And the weight is opposite the valve. We've made that lighter, so this probably should be a little lighter. Now, where the weight is, if this starts dropping down, I'll try it with the weight off. Yep, let's try it with the weight off, see if it's our lucky day. Use a paper towel to avoid scratching the rim. Okay, so now we have no weights. Oh, boy, is it close. That is really close. When it doesn't drop down, sometimes you make it worse by adding weights. I think we're just going to see how that... Well, it'll be easy. I'll just take it up to uh, maximum speed which we do every day anyway, <laughs> and see if it... Yeah, I think Michelin is right. They're, they're very close. Very close. Now I got two Pirellis left to, uh, to install, very soon in fact, and I hope they balance up as good as the Michelin did. Now one final little thing I can do here, since I have to go out for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, what I want to do is check the air pressure exactly the same when I get back if it's exactly the same I'll mount up the tire now if I wasn't going it's a good idea if you're not going to ride today and I'm not it's not looking like a riding day I would let it sit overnight and then check the tire and that just just makes a double double check that you don't have any leaks in the valve because you've replaced the valve or the bead of the tire so far this looks like one of the nicest easiest ones that's gone but again, I always think, and I wish Michelin would sponsor me, Michelin tires mount up and balance the best of any that I've done. And I've done a lot of tires, including racing slicks. Even the Michelin racing slicks are easy to mount. So Karen's garden is growing so well. We're going to run out and do some errands. It looks like the rain has stopped. but And it'll give our tire a little time to a safety bleed down before we put it back on. So it really is a good investment as we're out doing our errands. I wanted to just repeat, I always like to let it sit overnight, but we'll be back uh, before dark today and I will get that 
If the hair is exactly the same, I'll mount it right back on the bike. Okay, back to the ranch and let's get that tire mounted. See if it's still holding air. Okay, we've been gone for a while and let's just see if we've lost any air at all. None. Perfect. At, that's just safety within safety within safety. We are ready to mount her up. Now with the front wheel out of the way, it's real easy to get in here at the pipes, clean off all the debris and the bugs and everything. As long as I got this out of the way. Same thing like with the R1, anytime I have the fairing off, it's easy to get the pipes polished and any maintenance that you have to do in there. Just easy peasy. Now anytime I have something apart, it's just so easy to do some of these maintenance things with the front wheel not there. It's just so easy. Anyway, it's just a good investment in time. Keep those pipes nice and clean. Well, with the pipes all cleaned up, we should be ready to just put that wheel right back on. Now, the torque setting on this is 47 pounds, according to the factory manual. So, I'm going to try to get that accurate if I can. Now my torque wrench is really one of the tools, one of the few no harbor freight tools I have. 47 pounds. Now with that set at 47 pounds, the pinch bolt can go in. I drop a Loctite on all appropriate screws. And I'm ready to put the calipers back on. And the most important thing with the calipers is don't scratch the rim. I mean, real careful with that, that wire that goes to the ABS. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. So the reflector goes in with the top screw. All right, everything is locked tighted up now. And our wire, this is the most important thing. We didn't pinch this or distort this in some way. Now another thing I always like to do, and I notice I didn't spray the rotors. I don't want to get any of this on painted surfaces, but this will get rid of any brake dust. Or in the case we just did this, any soap or any of that fluid, that lube fluid. And we'll start off with nice clean brake dust. And it's, to me, it's really important because once you get oil and grease and everything on them, really difficult to get it clean. You can see how much came off of that. And they were clean. And that, that always ensures you're going to have good brake performance. And all that's left is to lower the bike back down off the wrench. Now that's a nice install. Now I know a lot of people that have an MT-09, that have any bike. Any bike in my collection would be a good example. And this is something really to think about. You want more performance, and the first thing you think of is I'll put a louder muffler, a different header, I'll do this, I'll do that, uh, and I'll somehow get two or three more horsepower if I'm really lucky. When in reality, the real performance gain is always in the tires. A fresh set of tires that don't aren't squared off and aren't wonky and are at the right pressure for the kind of riding you're doing, that's, that's the best value in motorcycling and enjoy in a motorcycle. So I hope you did enjoy the video. I try not to leave out any steps and I try always to thank the healthcare workers. God, uh, there's still people walking around without masks. Uh, so I know not everybody's, I think it's only 100 million people vaccinated out of 325. I don't know, but I'm one of them. That's all I care about. And my family, of course, too. Now. Before I end the video, there is lots of good information on the videos that I've already posted. And again, I, I try to repeat this so, because some people don't know how to do a search on my channel. You need to put my name in quotation marks, Wendy, U-R-T-N-O-W-S-K-I, quotation mark, and then the subject, in this case, Michelin 5 tires, because what's going to happen as time goes by? I'm going to post how these tires are after 1,000 miles, 2,000, 3,000, and of course, the most important thing. You know, how does the bike handle? I know a new front tire, especially any new tire, the bike gets instantly like a new bike. It's, and, and people that are less experienced riders, 
don't even know the bike's not handling right, and they um, they're going. And and a set of tires is like magic, always like magic, especially if you're going to do any high performance riding or track day riding. Anyway, so I hope you did enjoy the video. Again, I try not to leave out any steps, and we do post something up every day. And I hope you'll join us in the future. And thanks so much for watching. Now, for people that might be new to the channel, or this is the first windy video that you've seen. We do try to post up something new almost every day. In the summer, generally, the, the topic is rides and friends that we hang around with and bike meetups that we go to, and we do try to ride all season long, but obviously at some point in time, snow, salt, or uh, temperatures over 200 degrees Fahrenheit keep us from riding. But anyway, we do try to do something motorcycle-related every day. Our projects in the winter always include custom painting, custom wheels, customizing bikes, some mitzvahs we usually do for our friends. We polish things. We have polishing videos, carbon fiber work. We make some carbon fiber parts from scratch and install other ones that are commercial. We try to do the maintenance tips like swapping out chains. And I try, it's very difficult to, for me to keep track of the projects that are on my list of things to do because with seven motorcycles wearing out tires and batteries going dead and chains it keeps me busy it keeps me busy to the point where sometimes karen <laughs> thinks i'm a i'm a hamster but anyway we we do try to share what we learn where we're not really professional mechanics we're backyard mechanics but i think some of the work we do is pretty good i think some of the information we shared is pretty useful and i do enjoy editing the videos and I hope you enjoy watching them. So thanks for watching.